Hi there, I'm Sam from solar.com and today we're going to talk about how much solar panels cost. Now despite panel prices plummeting over the last decade and a bunch of incentives to help reduce the cost even further, solar has a reputation of being expensive. And I'm not going to argue that twenty dollars to $30,000 for solar panels isn't a lot of money, but I think it's important to put that into context. Because electricity is an essential cost that we're going to pay throughout our lives no matter what. And the status quo has been to buy that electricity from a utility provider and just pray that rates won't go up, even though they do with amazing consistency and they're expected to continue rising. Now solar provides an alternative way to buy that electricity that's often much more affordable than the status quo. So today we're going to talk about three things. First, we'll talk about how to estimate the cost of solar for your home. Second, we'll show you how to compare the cost of solar to the cost of continuing to purchase electricity from utility. And third, we'll go over some strategies for how to reduce the cost of solar. So let's get after it. So let's begin by trying to put a number on how much solar panels cost. Admittedly, this is really difficult because the cost of solar depends on so many things like how much electricity you use, uh, incentives available in your area, market conditions, your sun exposure, how you finance the system and the equipment you choose. It's kind of like asking how much does a car cost without specifying what kind of car, where you're going to buy it and how you're going to finance it. Nevertheless, it's nice to have a ballpark figure for the cost of solar. So we analyzed thousands of systems purchased through solar.com in 2022 to get an idea of how much solar costs for homes between 1,500 and 3,500 square feet. As you can see, the average cost of these systems was between 25 and $30,000. And once you factor in the 30% solar tax credit, the cost is closer to $20,000. But the real takeaway here is that the size of your home doesn't necessarily impact the size of your solar system. That's because solar systems are sized based on electricity consumption, not the size of your home. Next, we'll walk through how to estimate the cost of solar based on your average monthly electricity consumption. And to do this, we'll need to take a look at your latest utility bill. Now, most utility bills, like the one shown, will show the previous month's electricity consumption in kilowatt hours, and they typically have a graph of your monthly electricity usage throughout the year. Now using this graph, we can get a pretty good average for your monthly consumption. So let's say your average consumption came out to about 750 kilowatt hours per month, or about 25 kilowatt hours per day, which is just below the national average. Now the next thing we need to do is get an average number for the peak sun hours per day for your house, also known as solar irradiance. Now solar companies use satellite technology to get a pretty exact number for this. But for our quick and dirty method, we can use this map from the National Renewable Energy Lab. So let's say we get five peak sun hours per day, as many people in the southern half of the United States do. Next, we'll take your average daily consumption of 25 kilowatt hours, and we'll divide it by five peak sun hours per day to get a system size of five kilowatts. Then we'll take that and multiply it by 1.2 to account for efficiency loss and degradation, and we'll find that you need a six kilowatt system to offset 100% of your electricity use. Since one kilowatt is equal to 1,000 watts, we can rewrite the system size as 6,000 watts. So now that we have a system size in watts, we can multiply that by a price per watt to get the final cost of the system. Now price per watt is a super handy measurement for comparing different solar quotes. And solar systems are typically priced between three and five dollars per watt based on the size and complexity of the job. Now you're going to have to do some guesswork here because you don't know exactly how much per watt you're going to spend until you actually go get solar quotes. For this video, let's be conservative and say you get a quote at four and a half dollars per watt for our 6,000 watt system. That puts the gross price at $27,000 and that puts the net price at $18,900 after collecting the 30% tax credit. 
Now, obviously your results are gonna vary based on your electricity consumption, your peak sun hours, and the price per watt that you choose. But this is a good exercise to get a price range for what to expect when you start shopping for solar. Having a ballpark figure for how much solar costs even before you start shopping is a pretty good idea because it can help you identify scams, it can help reduce sticker shock, and it can give you a battle plan for how much you need to save or improve your credit to make solar happen in the future. Now, if you're ready to get an exact price for how much solar costs, it's time to go get quotes from solar companies. And just like a kitchen remodel or a landscaping project, it's a great idea to get at least three binding quotes from reputable installers. Now, there's two ways to go about this. First, you can go get them on your own. You can go research installers, check their reviews and certifications, make appointments, sit through sales pitches, design systems, and finally get multiple quotes in hand. Now this can take a little extra legwork, but you're in control and it's a totally valid way of going throughout this process. Now a second way is to go get solar quotes online. And there are several platforms that offer it, but there's a few things to be aware of in this space. First thing to watch out for is that not all solar comparison platforms offer binding quotes. In fact, many offer estimates. And the problem with that is you may see a really attractive price online on the platform and then that price tends to go up once an installer gets involved and actually bids the project. Now the second thing to be aware of is that not all of these solar comparison platforms thoroughly vet their installers or hold them to all that high of a standard. So it's worth taking the extra effort to research these companies on your own. Now we do things a little differently at solar.com. First, we offer binding quotes based on live pricing set by the installers themselves. So that means the price you see on our platform is the price you'll pay if you move forward with the project. The second thing is that we rigorously vet the installers in our network. In fact, uh, fewer than 30% of the installers that apply to join our network are actually accepted after going through our process. With that said, we still encourage you to research these companies on your own because that's just good sense. Now, once you have an idea or better yet, an exact quote for how much solar costs, it's time to compare that to the cost of buying electricity from a utility provider. And this is where we can really put the cost of solar into perspective. The best way to do that is to compare the levelized cost of energy, also known as LCOE, which is basically the cost per kilowatt hour of solar versus grid electricity. For example, the average cost of electricity in the U.S. in April 2023 was 16.5 cents per kilowatt hour. Now, on the other hand, if we factor in degradation for a six kilowatt solar system, we can expect it to produce 220,000 kilowatt hours of electricity over its 25 year warranty life. Now at the gross price of $27,000, that boils down to 12.3 cents per kilowatt hour. And at the net price of $18,900 after the solar tax credit, that boils down to 8.6 cents per kilowatt hour. Not only is 8.6 cents per kilowatt hour much cheaper than the average price of electricity in the U.S., it's cheaper than the average for any state in the U.S. And even if you're unable to collect the 30% tax credit, 12.3 cents per kilowatt hour would still be cheaper than the average grid electricity price in 38 of the 51 states and territories. And here's the kicker. While utility rates rise over time, the cost for your solar electricity remains flat. This is just like how getting a mortgage on a house gives you a flat payment for 30 years while the cost of rent increases over time. This chart shows the average price of utility electricity since 1979, during which time rates have increased at an average rate of 2.8% per year. Now, if we apply that same rate of energy inflation to the next 25 years, the average price of electricity would reach 33 cents per kilowatt hour by 2048. And if your electricity rate is already at 25 cents per kilowatt hour, well, let's just say it's time to start looking for an alternative source of electricity. So in addition to lowering your levelized costs of energy, solar also acts as a hedge against energy inflation 
because your savings build and accelerate over time as your utility rate climbs. For example, this chart shows four ways of buying 9,000 kilowatt hours of electricity per year, or 750 kilowatt hours per month. The blue line shows the cost of buying electricity from a utility at the national average price of 16.5 cents per kilowatt hour, rising 2.8% annually. The brown line shows utility electricity starting at 25 cents per kilowatt hour to represent higher cost states like California, New York, Connecticut, and Massachusetts. The orange and purple lines represent the cost of buying a six kilowatt solar system designed to produce 9,000 kilowatt hours per year. Now, if you pay cash, the lifetime savings are much greater, but it takes longer to recoup your upfront investment. If you finance, with a solar loan, your savings kick in sooner, but the interest payments eat into your lifetime savings. Of course, it's impossible to predict exactly how high utility rates will go over the next 25 years. However, unless they peak today and suddenly decide to reverse course, then solar is by far the more affordable option in the long term, and in higher cost markets, it often provides day one savings. Now, one way I like to picture going solar is like buying that three pound can of coffee from Costco for $25 instead of buying 50 individual cups of coffee at Starbucks for $3 each. Now it's gonna take you nine cups to break even on that big can, but once you do, your next 41 cups are pure savings. The last thing we're gonna do is go over some strategies to reduce the cost of your solar system. Because even though solar is the more cost of effective option in the long run, there's no use leaving money on the table. The first way to go about this is through incentives, like our friend the 30% solar tax credit, which is available everywhere in the United States. Now, as we saw, this is worth 30% of the gross cost of your system. So for a $27,000 system, the tax credit was worth $8,100, bringing the cost down to $18,900. I did a deep dive on the solar tax credit in this video here, so I'm not gonna go too far into detail, but there's a few things I'd like to point out. First, is that this incentive is claimed on your federal income tax return for the year that your system is installed. So if you plan on purchasing your system in cash, just know you need the full upfront amount and then you can recoup that 30% when you file your taxes. The second thing to know is that the tax credit works by reducing your tax liability. And this can be tricky for retired people that no longer have income and therefore don't have much tax liability. So my advice here is to connect with a licensed tax advisor well in advance to come up with a battle plan for collecting this tax credit if you have limited tax liability. Now, in addition to the federal solar tax credit, there are also incentives offered at the state and local government levels from utility providers themselves and from nonprofit groups. And these incentives can often be combined to really reduce the cost of your system. So it's worth spending 10 minutes to look up lo local incentives, which can save you thousands of dollars on the cost of solar. Now, the second way to reduce the cost of going solar is to get multiple quotes. Just like anything else, you can price shop for solar to get the best bang for your buck, just be aware that the absolute lowest price is not always best. Now remember, solar is both a home construction project and an investment in lowering your energy costs. And you want it done right by an installer that is gonna be around for 25 years to honor their warranties. And it's gonna have good customer service in case issues do come up. Now, if one company is offering a drastically lower price than its peers, it's worth wondering why and how they're able to do that. And finally, if you plan on financing your solar system with a loan, you can usually lower your interest rate by having a FICO credit score above 720. Now, as we've learned in the last year or so, a little change in interest can go a long way, especially with long-term loans. So it's worth fighting for every point to lower your uh, interest rate on your loan. Now, I don't have any advice on how to do that. I'm not qualified for that. So all I'll say is, Go meet with a certified credit specialist to check your FICO credit score ahead of time and to see what you can do to get it above that 720 threshold. All right, so what did we learn today? 
First, there are a few ways to estimate the cost of going solar, but nothing beats getting binding quotes from reputable installers in your area. And you can do that right here on solar.com. Second, <clears throat> solar is like buying electricity in bulk. Not only does it lower the cost per unit for electricity, but it serves as a hedge against rising electricity rates. And third, claiming incentives, comparing multiple quotes, and improving your credit score can all help reduce the cost of going solar and thereby increase your energy cost savings. Click the link in the description below to visit the solar.com learning center where you can learn more about the cost of going solar and how to reduce it using incentive. Or better yet, you can connect with an energy advisor to talk about your goals and get binding quotes from those reputable local installers. I'm Sam from solar.com. Don't forget to like and subscribe and to leave me questions in the comment section below and we'll see you in the next video.